from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Now hold on to the hand of the person you came with because it's time to welcome Ronald L. Smith. Hi guys, how are you? She makes me sound really scary. I'm scared of myself after that introduction. Well, you know what? Um, this is really quite fun for me. I'm from Baltimore, so I didn't have to travel very far to get here today. And I like to go to a lot of schools and do school visits and talk to kids about writing and scary books. Well, they don't have to be scary books. I just like talking about books. So this is a lot of fun um, for me to see all you guys here. Um, I write scary books. Who likes scary books? Oh my god. Wow. I'm talking really scary books. Like you might want to keep the lights on. Yeah. Now I write what's called middle grade. So we know what middle grade is, right? That's like 9 to 12? 9 to 12 year olds? Um, but I like to think of uh, my books for anybody can read them, um, whether you're a little kid or an adult. The first book I wrote was called Hoodoo, and it's about this little boy in Alabama a long, long time ago, and a threat comes to his town. It's a really bad guy called The Stranger, and he wears a black cloak, and he has a black hat, and he walks like this. But anyway, the little kid in the book, his name is Hoodoo Hatcher. And he's very special because he was born into a family that uses magic, but he doesn't know how to do any magic himself. So the stranger is looking for Hoodoo Hatcher, and Hoodoo has to find the magic within himself to defeat the stranger. It's a lot of fun. So that book was my first book. It was very exciting. I was very happy to see it published. And my new book is called The Mesmerist, which you see up there. And it's about a totally different time and place. It's in England at the turn of the century, right? So that's a long time ago, over 100 years ago. And it's about a young girl and her mom. And they read people's minds, and they do seances, and they have Ouija boards. But you know what? It's all fake. They can't really do it. They're just taking people's monies, money. But then one day, my character, Jessamine, she really does get a message from the other side. So even though she didn't think that she could read minds and do all this creepy stuff, she actually can. And something reaches out to her, and she finds out that she's very special. But <clears throat> before I wrote all these books, I was a little kid, and I lived all over the place. My dad was in the Air Force. We moved. I lived in Japan, North Carolina, South Carolina, Michigan, Alabama, Delaware. But one thing that always kept me from not losing my mind was the library. I knew that I could find the li a good book in a library. So libraries were really what kept me feeling good. So even though there was always weird stuff going on, moving every two years, the libraries were the thing that I really loved. And I started writing books when I was young. They weren't very good, just lots of words on the page. And then one day, I grew up, got a job, and I forgot all about the magic of those books I read when I was a kid. I read books like The Lord of the Rings. Has anybody heard of those? And the Narnia books. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? I can speak Elvish. You know the elves in The Lord of the Rings? Do you want to hear it? You sure? <laughs> okay, here goes. Ah, Elbereth Gilthoniel, Celebran Pinamiriel, O Mene Agla Elenaf, Naharred Palindirio, O Galadrimen Inarath, Fanuilos Lelinaton, Nepar, Si Neparion. You know what that means? That means I gotta go to the bathroom. No, it means uh, three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their hall of stone. You've heard it all before. But anyway, 
that's what you call being a nerd. And I like being a nerd. I'm a grown-up nerd. And I like writing kids' books because it reminds me of how much fun I had reading those books when I was a kid and how much fun I had memorizing those words of Elvish and Klingon or whatever you want to call it. Now I get to do it for a living, and uh, I really, really like it. It's a lot of fun. So um, I want to read just a tiny bit of my book. It won't take very long, but it'll give you a sense of what it's about, OK? It'll just be a page or two. And this is from The Mesmerist. <clears throat> England, 1864, a thousand shards of porcelain. Being stuffed into a wardrobe with your hands tied is a dreadful way to start your day. There's hardly any light but for the yellow glint of a candle flame through a small crack in the door. Dust, <clears throat> dust tickles my nostrils. Spiders are in the corners too. I hate spiders. I breathe out through my nose and try to think of something peaceful something besides Dr. Barnes, sitting with mother, nervously clutching a handkerchief or glass of sherry, hoping beyond hope that somehow a message from his dead daughter, Lydia, will be revealed. That would be through me. I am the vessel, you see, through which the dead loved one will speak. Actually, it is all a sham. This is how it works. We knew Dr. Barnes had lost his daughter recently, and when he, made me, when he made the appointment, all it took was a few flowery words to begin the ruse. Dear Papa, dab your eyes, dry your tears. I am in the bosom of the Lord, in whose grace I have found everlasting peace. Yours always, Lydia. <clears throat> what Dr. Barnes doesn't know is that an hour before his arrival, I wrote this very message on a chalk slate and hid it in the wardrobe secret panel. From there, it became a very simple matter to step inside with a blank one and make the swap. Also, and this is key, mother is very good at tying slip knots. Soft murmurs echo beyond the door. I picture mother with closed eyes, her thin nostrils flaring. On some days, the flames from the fireplace, fireplace provide enough heat for her face to flush, which makes the act all the more authentic. I hear the scrape of a chair and then footsteps. Finally, I sigh in relief. I want to get out of here. I pinch my chick cheeks for a rosy flush and slip my hands back into the knot. The iron lock of the wardrobe clicks. The door squeaks open. I take a deep breath, <gasps> force my body to go limp, and then, with an exaggerated gasp, fall face forward onto the floor. Kaboosh. Dr. Barnes leaps out of his chair. I hear, his, I hear his teacup rattle on the table and then crash, sending a thousand shards of porcelain across the hearth. Oh my God, he cries. Is she, is she dead? Mother, being a true professional, plays her part with ease. No, she is fine. She has been to the other side. Please, give her a moment. She kneels and leans in close and brushes a lock of hair from my eyes. The fresh scent of her perfume surrounds me. It is a lovely fragrance, and one I always associate with mother, which lifts my spirits whenever I am down, something I feel at this very moment. She helps me up, untimes the rope, that, the thin rope that binds my wrists, and leads me to a long chaise covered in red and blue fabric. Mother picks up the wooden slate from the floor. She gives Dr. Barnes a sharp, sharp look. The dead do not always speak what we wish to hear, she says, and sometimes their messages can be confusing or even incomprehensible. Dr. Barnes exhales a shaky breath. Mother in class the slate. The blood drains from her face. What is it, Dr. Barnes asks, drawing closer. Mother is speechless. I sit up and read the words written in a crooked script. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Dun, dun, dun. So that's just the beginning of the story. Thanks. So basically, there's a really evil threat that's in town. And it's reaching out to my character, Jessamine, 
and she's going to go on an adventure and find out what it's all about. So she has this power that she didn't know that she had. But like a lot of us, we find that when we're under, uh, under pressure, we can sometimes rise to the occasion. So does anybody have any questions about writing? Mm. Or drawing? Or any kind of creative pursuit? How long does it take you to write books? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, sometimes you can write a book in a year or maybe six months, but then you can continue to work on it and it can take a really long time. So I'd probably say a year. But the most important thing is finishing the book, so it doesn't matter how long it takes. Um, uh, what, what made you want to write scary books? That's a good question. You know, I didn't really start out wanting to write scary books, but for some reason, when I sat down, that's what happened. Maybe because I have all this stuff hiding in my brain and it wants to get out. But um, I don't know for sure. But it's fun. I like it. I like scaring people. But I'm actually nice. <laughs> good to know. What makes you uh, give you the ideas of the books? What, where do I get my ideas? All around. Um, sometimes you walk by and you hear somebody on the street and they may say something like a few sentences or a couple words or sometimes you hear a song or you might be on the train and you hear something. It's all around you. All you have to do is remember to look for it. How do you get the names? How do I get the names of my books? Well, usually it has to do with the characters and what the story is about. Hoodoo is called hoodoo because that's what it's about, which is a hoodoo is a sort of magic, a folk magic. And the mesmerist is called the mesmerist because it's about mesmerizing people, like hypnosis. So that's why it's called the mesmerist. Anybody else? Are your books in a series, or are they just like random books? Right now they're just random books, but I might write another one with the same characters uh, sometime in the future. And I, didn't, I should tell you guys something else that's really cool. Next year, in January, uh, there's going to be a movie coming out. It's called Black Panther. You've heard of that, right? Well, I'm writing a book about Black Panther as a little kid. So that's going to be really exciting. So look for that book next year. It's called Black Panther, The Young Prince. How fun is it to write books? Well, it's fun, it's also hard, and it's frustrating, but it's fun. You know why I say that? It's because it's a great job to have, but you really, really have to love it because it's hard. You have to sit down and not get up. You have to sit down and not turn on, you know, Netflix. You can't turn on The Big Friendly Giant or a series of unfortunate events on Netflix. You have to sit there and work. So I try to reward myself. If I work for two or three hours, then I can watch something. But it's fun. I have to do it. Where'd you come up with the idea for um, your book? Uh, well, these two books are very different. You know, I told you that Hoodoo is about the Deep South in the 1930s, a long, 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 long time ago. And that's where my family's from, the South. So I wanted to write about the South. And I also like things like uh, things in England. Like when I was a little kid, the fantasy books I read were all these like British English writers. So I wanted to write a book like that. Um, kind of like to remember my childhood, but um, that's, where, that's where that came from. How did you find your publisher? How did I find my publisher? Well, um, that's a really long story, and uh, you can go online and you, you can find lots of success stories, but the short version is um, I worked very hard for a number of years. 
on different stories. Um, Hoodoo was my third book, but it's the one that got me signed by an agent. So these days you can publish books on your own or you can find a traditional path. I wanted to go the traditional route, so I kept working and working and working until I wrote a book that got an agent's attention. And once it did, she assigned me as a client. And then, you know, the agents, they know editors, so they send your book to publishers. And I got really lucky. It was a dream come true because uh, Hoodoo, as my first book, went to auction, so several people wanted to, to buy it. So I was very lucky. Why did you like drawing the pictures? What's that? Why did you like drawing the pictures? Well, I didn't get to draw the pictures in my books. Um, the people who make the book, the book company, they choose people to draw the, the pictures. So my books are mostly words. Sometimes at the beginning of the chapter, you might see a little picture or the cover like has a picture, but, um, but the writer usually just writes the words. Okay. Um, how and why did you decide to pursue a career in writing, and what kept you going? Well, that's a very good question. Um, well, from the time I was your age, I liked to write. I used to do the writing, and my brother used to do the drawing, so I would write and he would draw. And we would stay up late creating stories. We stayed up so late, my mom and dad would bang on the door and tell us to go to sleep. So that's a pretty good problem to have. But I liked it so much, I just kept doing it. And then when I grew up, I looked for a job where I could use my writing skills. And that job was advertising. So I used to write commercials that you've probably seen on TV before, like McDonald's and a bunch of other stuff. But I got tired of writing those kind of, that kind of stuff. So I, I really kept working on my books that whole time. And it finally paid off. But if you like to write, find as many opportunities as you can to write whether it's for your school paper, or for yourself, or your friends, or whatever, just continue to do it. Thank you. You're welcome. How do you choose your characters? How do I what? How do you choose your character? They choose you. The character chooses you. They come around, and they tap you on the shoulder, and then you turn around, and they're gone. But they whisper in your ear what their name is sometimes. So that's a very kind of weird way of saying, you just make it up, you know? Sometimes you say, I want to write about this kind of person, or I want to write about that kind of person, and they just kind of begin to take a picture in your mind, and you just put it all together, and then they become a real person, at least in your head, sometimes. But then you can also talk to them, and people will think you're crazy, but I talk to my characters all the time. How tiring is it to, to write a book? Um, it's a lot of work, yeah. It's a lot of work, it's very tiring. But it's worth it if you finish it. If you can get to the end, then it's really worth it. How do you separate, how do you know when to, when to write dialogue than when to write narrative? Wow, so you've got all the right words. Dialogue, narrative, plot. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, when you look at any book in the bookstore, the library, you're going to see dialogue and you're going to see the narrative and you'll see that it's broken up. So you can't have a book that's all dialogue, right? You can't have a book that's all description. So you have to find those places where your characters talk. So you want to set the scene and then you want to say one person says one thing, another person says another thing. So it becomes natural. Um, because you can't go on and on and on describing a car, right? You gotta describe the people in the car too, and they're probably gonna talk, so that's how you do it. You ever write um, books for four-year-olds? Before, did I ever write books before? For four-year-olds. Oh, maybe one day, maybe one day. That's got to, I think that's really hard. But there are lots of good books for four-year-olds, though. OK. Any more? How many yeah. books have you written? I've written two books. Well, I've actually written a lot of books. But I've only written two books you can find in the store, because the other ones are under my bed, because they're really bad. <laughs> and I don't want anybody to read them. Um. 
Did you ever do any scary things when you were little? Oh my God, did I? <laughs> I can't tell you, they're really scary. Tell me. I was kind of bad. Please. One time I, I, I rode my bike down the hill because somebody dared me to and I broke my arm. So don't ever do that. Do what your mom and dad tell you to do. All right, I will. Last, last question. How much did your book cost? How much does it cost? Well, if you go right over to, um, I don't know, actually. <laughs> well, the hoodoo just came out in paperback, so it's not that expensive. And the mesmerist is still in hardback. So they're selling them over there at the Politics and Prose booth. So thanks very much for coming out, everybody, and listening to me ramble on and on and on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.